If you enjoy watching Common Ground online, please consider making a tax-deductible contribution at lptv.org. Common Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Hi, I'm Rachel Johnson. Thanks for joining us for the season finale of Common Ground. In this episode, we visit Northern Community Radio and their radio roadshow. Come along with us and enjoy a live music fundraiser and a volunteer picnic in Grand Rapids. KAXE staff and volunteer DJs explore the relationship of the station, the community, and culture. My name is Jennifer Penix and I'm Member Services Manager at Northern Community Radio, which is KAXE and now KBXE in Bemidji. And we're doing a concert tonight uh, featuring a blues musician named Kelly Hunt. She's from Kansas City. Uh, right now we have Lance Benson and Mark Bauer who are opening up for us. This is kind of a benefit to help um, support Northern Community Radio, help introduce people to KBXE in the area if they're not familiar with it yet. My name is Julie Crabb. I live for KAXE Radio. I'm on the board of directors. I'm a music programmer, and I'm a host of Green Cheese, a call-in trivia program. I live for it. What KAXE offers is a chance to hear folk, rock, blues, jazz, and world music. And your neighbors are programming the music, which is who I am. I'm your neighbor. I'm their neighbor. Well, hello, I'm Steve Ross. I'm a volunteer DJ. KXC was the first rural public radio station in the United States. When we started out, NPR said that we would never make it, <laughs> that we would be just uh, broadcasting to a bunch of gophers. But we said, no, we're going to do it. The people that were there, I wasn't there, it wasn't me. When they started out, they said, no, we're going to do this. We know we can do it with an idea and an urgency to give community a place to play music that isn't normally played. Our founders, Susie and Rich McClear, talked to the legislature and talked to people that would give us a place where we could raise money and be heard. And they've done that all over the world, actually. Well. KAXE serves the culture of North Central Minnesota by um, reaching out to all of the different types of people that we have in, in uh, the Northland. The Native Americans who live here, the, the mining issues, the lumber issues, um, the phrenology, you know, we, we just, we reach out to almost everybody's interests. I live in this town because of KAXE. That is one of the main reasons I want to stay here and why I never want to live anywhere else. I moved up here in 1990. Radio has always defined me. I've said this many times, but I'll say it again, in so many different ways. One day, I heard Scott Hall say, if you'd like to become a member or a volunteer, please call this. And I called up, and they said yes. And I went, oh my god, I'm so excited. And well, I can, I, once you're in, you, you can never go back. You just can never go. And that's what I say every fundraiser. Once you become a part of this family, you will never, ever go back to listening to something that you don't have a hand in, that you don't have your money in. Most of our programming is done by volunteers, and on our station, you, they get to choose the music. It's a really a, a mix of different kinds of music that we like to hear, but it's not a pre-programmed list that anyone's um, just following off a computer. They're actually putting the CDs in the CD player and choosing what they're going to play next. I do a show called The Dead Set, which is music of the Grateful Dead and their related bands. I also do DJing um, just for like on the river and regular 
regular shows once in a while, bring music to the people. You know, I love the broadcasters, They're the, the uh, DJs, they're so wonderful, they're so down to earth. I love the no commercials. I love that it's um, locally relevant, that they talk about things going on in our area. I love that they talk about what's happening with the birds and the, the plants and uh, the flowers in our area. I love that. I called up the station and said, uh, would it be all right if I brought in some of my music and played a show? And uh, Marshall Ullman was the, uh, the manager or the, uh, at the time. And uh, he said, yeah, come on down. So I did. We learn how to be comfortable on the air. We learn how to work a board. We learn what any broadcaster would learn, and we learn how to do it ourselves so that we can give the community that listens to us the music that they want to hear. Well, doing the dead set, actually when I started out, it was a four-hour show. We did it every other Saturday night from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> Come on in, I'll uh, show you where I put my show together. I usually do my show from the studio, but I put it together here in my own little uh, cubby hole. <laughs> so I'd haul in my reel to reel and I have uh, live concerts that I've recorded some and uh, have gotten recordings through many other people who have handed their recordings to me. And so I'd haul in my reel to reels and we'd plug it into the board and away we'd go. <laughs> the Northern Community Radio has over a hundred volunteers on the air. Uh, some of them participate by doing music programming and some people do it by doing community journalism and uh, co-hosting, say, a public affairs program. There are lots of ways for people to volunteer. And generally, we hold three volunteer training classes each year. Well, I think when you volunteer, you're going to be meeting people that you generally don't get in contact with. And when you open up like that, when you meet somebody that you have never met, it opens up your mind. And people get to not fear each other. They help each other out. And it just makes the world a better place. If someone wants to volunteer, they can contact the station at 800-662-5799 and talk to either me, Maggie Montgomery, or Heidi Holton, who is our program director, and we'll get you signed up for the next volunteer training class. Well, I do a lot of volunteer work for the station. Um, I come in on Saturdays and I answer the phones for Between You and Me. And I, uh, on the fundraisers, the f fundraising weeks that we have are some of my favorite weeks. And I come in every morning with another person and we take the phone calls for the fundraisers. And that is really fun because that's when you get to talk to people and you get to know them. One of the great shows that their uh, KXC has just basically started doing in the last year, I believe, is the Great Northern Radio Show. It's just a great show, uh, brings you back, back to the good old radio. This is the Great Northern Radio Show. I'm Aaron Brown. We're broadcasting live on Northern Community Radio from the Bagley High School Auditorium in Bagley, Minnesota. Tonight's show is made possible from the generous support of the Iron Mining Association of Minnesota and the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. The Great Northern Radio Show celebrates modern life off the beaten path. We're not the biggest show. We're not the most famous. We're not even on Pinterest. We're a contender, though. Here with the title song from their new album, number one contender with us all night, the hobo nephews of Uncle Frank. The old style shows, uh, the classic format of, of the variety show has always been something that just gave me comfort. I enjoyed the pacing and it's inauthentic and authentic at the same time. You know, you get a little bit of showmanship, but you, you get moments of humanity that sneak through and it's really exciting to see those. Scott Hall hosts the morning show Mondays through Thursday. His calm tone and subtle curiosity propel the state's finest news and feature program. And who could forget the day the morning show broadcast live from the surface of Mars? Temperatures on the red planet this morning, 65 to 70 below, highs today around 90 above. Lows tonight, 145 to 155 below zero, and we'll have those wind and dust storms the rest of the week. Although Martian ice is safe to walk on. Coming up, phenology with John Latimer. John will tell us about the wildlife he's been learning about on Mars 
this time of year, including the rare Zaflacaroid, a bird-like lizard that shoots radiation at its prey, and of course the boo wookie wookie pampa woos, which have laid their eggs in Harry Hutchins' ears. Harry will tell us all about that when he joins John for a talk on the wild side. Coming up at nine, music on the river, and your host today is the Martian Emperor Zog. One of the defining aspects of Northern Community Radio is the way that the programming connects with the people and land of Northern Minnesota. A part of my life now is taking this experience of Northern Minnesota culture around the area so that people here have something to celebrate and be excited about. One of the really neat things about the Great Northern Radio Show is that the star of the program is the community where it's held. And this particular show being held in Bagley, Bagley is the star of the show. We're here for our sixth show in our ongoing series of live radio variety programs from all over northern Minnesota. And for our radio show, just know that it's not a Prairie Home Companion, it's people who live in northern Minnesota telling stories about us. We're not piping it in. This is not for the tourists. This is for everybody who lives in this place. And we'll make fun of ourselves and we'll make jokes about life in northern Minnesota that we can make because we're really from here. And it's that cultural sharing that gives a culture its pride to grow and change with the times. You know, what's the future for northern Minnesota? Maybe we don't know. But we know that if we can talk to each other and experience a cultural element that the, that the people will survive the people will go on and that's what this show for me is partially about is just providing that opportunity for people to share what it is to be from northern Minnesota in music and song and story the great northern radio show it's actually a radio show so if you're a member of the audience and you're listening on the air you're gonna get an entirely different experience of the show than you are if you're present for the performance what you're seeing really in the performance are people on stage being moved around, actually looking at scripts, actually gathering around microphones, people pointing, people pushing people forward to be next, and the kind of things that you will never hear if you just hear the product on the radio. I would say if you listen on the radio, you're going to hear a very pure experience of the show. It's going to sound fairly seamless. And if you come to the auditorium and you witness the show as a member of the live audience, you're going to see the warts and all. You're going to see it being made. You're going to see what happens behind the scenes. And it's really entertaining. What we always tell people is the radio part of our show and the live audience experience are very different things. There are some obviously some overlap. The, the content, the jokes, are they work the same, I think, both places. But the live audience comes to see the production of a live radio show. So what you're getting is a uh, look inside the Swiss watch or the machine that makes the radio uh, production that people at home are listening to. Really the benefit of coming and seeing it live is the experience of seeing us go through changes, go through uh, adjustments, and watching the commotion on stage as people are moved around. You know, we're not like um, Lawrence Welk where they drag out one person and they go away and they drag out another person. Um, we are all up here on stage, we're all working at the same time, and, and people jump in kind of on a schedule that, that, that they have, and, and, and so you see everybody all the time, you see people getting ready. There's an excitement to it. It's almost like you're part of on a secret, you're in on a secret that's going on and, and the people at home are getting what we hope is a nice smooth product but uh, the people in the audience see that it sounds smooth but it doesn't look smooth. I'm Carolyn King and I am the queen of cheese this year. Well participating in the event of green cheese it's like you become part of a big family because the same people call in all the time and you get to know them and then once you start calling in they get to know you and really it's everybody is all connected through green cheese on that Saturday night. I'm Linda Johnson one of the hosts of Colin Trivia Green Cheese. Green Cheese is a Colin Trivia show. I toss out the questions, or Julie Crabwell, or Brandon Chase, whoever's doing it, and people call in, 218-326-1234, and give it their best poke at the answer. We have three lines here. When we turn on the Gettner, and whatever lights up and starts flashing, I have no idea who's going to call in. I poke a flashing light, and I say, hi, you're on green cheese. What you got? It's just all about having fun, and some people get a little competitive on it, and they want to hear either a ding or a yes or good. I get excited. I cannot help myself. This is just the coolest thing ever. Anybody can call in. They, we do not screen. 
I don't know of any other radio or TV show that doesn't screen, that doesn't have somebody out there saying, hello, what's your answer? What do you want to say? Oh, we've already got that. And, you know, no, we've heard that before. It's just, hi, you're on green cheese, what you got? All right, where was that question now? You know, I asked that about an hour and a half ago, so I'm not sure where that one went. Let's see. It's the highlight of my week when I know that I'm going to be constantly working on questions. And it's not working, it's playing. I can't stop myself from coming up with questions for green cheese. I'll hear something like it was tectonic plates. I was listening to something on National Public Radio talking about earthquakes and tectonic plates. And thought, plate, huh, I wonder what other plates there are. And then I just you know, give myself maybe five minutes and I came up with eight different plates. Well, I'll throw that out as a green cheese question. And sure enough, they come up with a total of 26 so far. And then the show is over. So you know, if I put it out there again, Sure, contribute to it. And you learn so much from it in such a fun way. And the dogs get all excited. They can tell if it's a Saturday night. And I say, we're going to go do cheese now. We're lucky dogs. We get to do cheese. Yeah. We have all kinds of different people that call in. We've got wackos, intelligent people, fun-loving people, nutcase. And all of those are, are wonderful adjectives in my mind. Uh, we've got the blue noodles from Little Split Hand, and usually they'll have a whole slug of people are out there. We've had Guthrie Nation, and they've had everything from six-year-olds on up to 80-year-olds call in. Um, Otto and Doe in the war wagon. You know, we've got the uh, Virginia bottom jaw and I said well, how'd you come up with that name she said well when you asked me where I was calling from I was digging for a beer in the bottom drawer of the refrigerator so that's how her name came up and they're just all kinds that we've got the chunky dippers of Owen Lake Lake Imaginary who doesn't live on a lake so they wanted to have it sound that way so they make themselves feel good that way too skull scratchers the team from Rabbit Lake We've got, oh, there's so many of them. We've got Camp Carnage from Jack the Horse Lake, north of Deer River. We've got the Clawson Avenue group in Bemidji. And every time she says Clawson Avenue, because I like pickles so well, I have to wipe my mouth or keep from drooling. The Wabana Brain Trust, and they have all the different parts of the brain that call in. We've got DeKalb, Illinois, calls in on a regular basis. Joe from Elk Grove. California. We've had people call in from Germany, all over the states, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana. I can't think of any place offhand where they don't call in, but we've got the regulars that want to call in, whether it's the whippersnappers of Brainerd, the hill dwellers south of Bemidji. They just make up their own names. It's just hilarious. You know, Ken from New Ufta, uh, Dolores from Bovee, and she's passed on now, and uh, we've just got great people who call in, who want to have fun, who are interested in learning things and sharing it. It's a hoot. Anybody can listen to us anywhere, probably even on the space station, through streaming us at kaxe.org. So if somebody doesn't have the, uh, doesn't live within the distance of the radio signal, even though it's 100,000 watts here, and I think it's 50,000 watts over there in translator in Brainerd, you can still get us on not only a computer at kaxc.org, there are now, I think, four or five different apps where people can listen to us and play on their cell phones. And that just came out about a week or two ago. It is such a privilege to sit behind this mic and have people that I don't know call in and share with me, have the guts to answer something that they don't know if they've got the right answer. We are so community-based. There's nobody in Boston or New York or Dallas or LA or any place else telling us what to play. You will not find many examples like Northern Community Radio, uh, KAXC in Grand Rapids, KBXC in Bemidji. You won't find examples of this many places in this country. The communities here are kind of built to facilitate this kind of radio. There's a great arts community, especially here in Bemidji, we've noticed there's a fantastic arts community. And then there's this unique culture that stretches back 100 plus years on places like the Iron Range, where there's so many interesting stories. A lot of commotion took place here historically, and though it seems like a long time ago, it really wasn't. You had all sorts of new populations sweeping across nor northern Minnesota, 
uh, not that long ago, in the lifetime of people who are still alive. And so there's all of these fresh uh, influences and uh, fresh cultural perspectives and a blending of, of, of different kinds of communities. And it's produced interesting things, interesting art, interesting music, and, and interesting stories. And that's really why this show has focused on Northern Minnesota is we really think there's so many stories here that we could, we could go for 30 years or longer and never tell all the stories uh, and experience all the music that this place has to offer. A lot of what we do on Northern Community Radio kind of harkens back to a bygone era. It seems like modern radio nowadays is very focused on its advertisers and on selling a product. And what we do is kind of back in the old days of radio where the people come on the air, they're real characters, and their task is to engage with the audience directly and not you know, not necessarily selling soap. Well, KAXE is different from corporate radio, like I said before, because it's, you feel like you're part of a family. You know, once you become a member, and well, even if you're not a member, you get to know the radio personalities, and it's intimate, it's intimate radio, I guess. Corporate radio seems cold and um, official, but KAXE is homey, it's down to earth, and you know, it's, it, it talks about your life here in northern Minnesota and really makes you feel part, a part of it. Well, the, the important thing to know is that Northern Community Radio is an independent public station. It's, not, uh, it's an affiliate of National Public Radio. They subscribe to the programming, but they're not, Minnesota Public Radio is a wholly separate organization. So it's totally independent. It's heavily influenced by the people who take the time to participate and get involved in Northern Community Radio. Its agenda is really that of the people who are excited about music and culture and life in northern Minnesota. So it's, it's a station that genuinely belongs to the people it aims to serve. It, almost a cooperative station in many ways. It's really remarkable that something like that could succeed as it has and grown as it has in a place like northern Minnesota in a time like the present. There's not a lot of examples of that model working. Somehow it has worked quite well. It's been successful. It, it really has worked. You know, KXE is uh, it's a star that's out there that uh, shines really bright. And uh, you know, there's a million stars out there, but this is one that shines brighter than a lot of them. It's a unique being, and that's what should. I hope it keeps going. I hope it keeps that community feel, even though that we're getting bigger and more stations. We're adding more communities by adding relayers here and there and stuff. And, but we still have that feel of being community oriented. So you can talk to your neighbor when you come in and uh, listen to KAXE, KBXE. Northern Community Radio, KAXE, KBXE wouldn't even be here if it weren't for the people who started it, who wanted a radio station up here in rural northern Minnesota in the first place. We have local businesses who support us, whether they're in Bemidji or Grand Rapids or Brainerd or up in Effie. It's uh, community-based. People want the radio station. They put their ears and their money behind it. We're member-based radio. Our largest contributors are the people who listen. One of the things you're going to find reflected in Northern Community Radio is the nature of Northern Minnesota. You're going to hear a lot about um, the lakes, the forests, the animals, the weather. Um, we're going to hear about the creative output of the people that live here. We're going to have uh, creative activities like what Aaron Brown is doing with the Great Northern Radio Show. We're going to have musicians and music and it's because people, uh, because Northern Minnesota is this and Northern Minnesota people love this, that's what you're going to hear on the air. And because our organization, being a couple of transmitters on, on hills, is just a reflection of the things that go on in the community. And we try to hold ourselves open for the expression of the people who live here. It's everybody's participation that makes it possible. It's 
When people use the station to talk to each other, it's the interactivity of the programming, it's people calling up and, and taking part in what we do, it's when people tell us about their events and the things that matter to them, that we can do good stories. It's Everybody needs to keep us in the loop if anything important or interesting is happening, and we'll help get that out to everybody else. Well, community radio um, is almost always non-commercial radio, and we're really focused on our community. In fact, that's the mission of Northern Community Radio, is to build community through our radio programming and concerts and things like that. Um, it's a kind of station where you can walk in the door and let us know what's going on. So much of modern life's dilemmas are related to this rootless, wandering spirit people have because they don't know where home is. We like to really bring the notion that there is a home, you know, there is a place, and there is something that welcomes us. One of the things about Northern Community Radio is that it's really fun. It's a fun place to be, it's a good group of people, and it's a lively place to be. It's really an honor to be part of it. We're just running, singing in a travel show. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next season on Common Ground. If you have a segment idea for Common Ground pertaining to North Central Minnesota, contact us at legacy at lptv.org or call us at 218-333-3022. To view this episode or any Common Ground segment, visit us at lptv.org. individual segments or entire episodes of Common Ground, please call 218-333-3020. Common Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people on November 4th, 2008. If you enjoyed this episode of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org. <laughs>